Hey guys, you might recognise the truck in the background. This is my mate Simon's 60 series. Now we've done a fair amount of work on this truck over the last few months and you can check those videos out on the Smart Automotive YouTube channel. Now, a few weeks ago we totally stripped down the front axle and did a full rebuild on it. It had half shafts, CVs, new wheel bearings and it also had the AVM hubs on there. Right, so while it was up on a hoist we thought we'd have a look at the rear drivetrain. It was all good apart from the rear wheel bearings. Just a little bit of play there. Now we could have just nipped them up, but I spoke to my mate Simon, because of the K's that this truck does and the amount of work it does, we thought it'd be better to change them out. And then at least we know that the front and rear wheel bearings were changed at roughly the same time. And while we were there, having a look at the passenger side, we found an even deep, deeper problem with the brake shoes. But I'll show you that later. So we're gonna be using the Terrain Tamer bearing kits. Now, as always, these are the best kits on the market. Get all the stuff in there, all the seals, pack of stuff. We're gonna be changing out the rear brake shoes. These are Bendix shoes. And as always, mate, I'm gonna be giving it a little tart up. We're gonna be rust proofing the hubs and a little bit of caliper paint on the, uh, on the drums there. So right, let's get into it. Right, so be careful when you're taking the wheels off. Now they're pretty heavy, especially on these other trucks. Right, there we go. Now, one thing I will mention, it's always good to have a, a clean workbench, just so you can lay your parts out as they come off in the way that they come off so they can go back on in the same manner. Now, in the back here, so you're not fighting against the, uh, the brake shoes, it's always a good idea to let the brake shoe, shoe adjusters right off. Right, so there's no point in fighting against the ratchet, so use a little long screwdriver just to the left hand side of the, uh, the ratchet. Hold the spring back and then you can let it off nice and easy. Right, so once you let the adjuster off, it makes life so much easier. You won't have to fight the shoes with the friction against the, uh, against the, uh, the drum itself. Look. Look that, nice and easy. Right, so there you have it, nice exposed uh, hub assembly. Right, so we, we're going to be reusing the old drums, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with these. Um, we're just going to give it a clean up and a paint, but what we will do is just give them a light dusting with some um, sandpaper, some emery paper, just on the inside edge. And what we'll do, it will help the, the new shoes bed in quicker into the, old, uh, into the old drums. Just gives a score on the surface. Just go round once with that. Don't go too mad, there's no need for it. Just concentrate on the, uh, the outside edge a bit more. Just try and take that lip away. And then, uh, yeah, we're pretty much done. That's it. See the stuff that come out of there? So yeah, pretty much ready to give it a coat of paint. Uh, we're gonna use this old tub here just to elevate it above the ground so we don't make too much mess. Now this stuff, this motor spray uh, rust converter, and now this, if you've been watching some of the uh, Smart Automotive YouTube videos, I love this stuff, it's amazing. So we're gonna, just to give it a light coating of this, not too much, it goes a long way. Just a little dollar brush from uh, the hardware store. Now I love this stuff man, it goes on and then you can actually see it reacting with the rust. It goes sort of a green tinge. Get it on there, all nice. Don't be shy with it. This will protect them into the years to come when you look after them. Unless you'll have to uh, service them in the future. Don't need to be neat and tidy, just get it on there. It dries really well actually, really smooth. You wouldn't believe you put it on with a brush. That's one side done. Right in there. And we'll flip it over and we'll just do the inside. Not, don't do the, um, don't do where the pad's gonna be going. Just do the inner bit. Oh, now I might need a bit more there. Tiny bit just to protect the inside here. Yeah, be careful not to put it on the face. Won't matter that much, but. Right, 
I'll turn that back over and let it go off, I reckon. Oh, I might just get my finger mark, get rid of my finger marks there, I'll just touch it. Happy days. Let that dry. And then we'll get some caliper paint on there. Nice one. Right, so this is the passenger brake assembly. As you can see, there's a lot less material on the lower half of the shoe than there is on the other side. Now what happened, when, I pulled, when we were inspecting it and I pulled the drum off, the, uh, the spring and the retaining washers fell on the floor. And this has resulted in this shoe naturally gravitating towards the ground and just wearing away at that over time. That's why we've decided to change out the shoes and make it all pucker for the future. Now I've got the drum stripped off, I'm just gonna take a couple of pictures. So I'll get my phone here and get, make sure you get a couple of angles. Like so, although we're gonna lay this out on the bench the way it came off, it's always good because later on, if you get a bit confused, like you'll always be able to refer back to it. Get a couple of angles. Some below. Because trust me, if you get mixed up, this will be the only thing that will save you. There we go, nice one. Now I can start stripping that down with confidence. <clears throat> right, let's get this hub off. Right, so get these uh, nuts and locking washers off. And then you've got your little, um, little cone selectors under there and I'll show you a little trick with those. I'm put them aside. Well, now the trick, of, trick is with these, a lot of people beat them right on the edge. Now you're not trying to beat them out, you're just trying to shock them slightly so they just come forward. So hit them squarely on the, see, pop straight out. And just do that again on everyone. I've seen people beat the life out of these and they don't go anywhere. It's just, it's not about going too mad with them. Hit them side on. There you go, nice and easy. There you go. Oh, so I'm just using a, a normal carpenter's hammer there, that's all you need. Get all those off. And Simon looks after this vehicle quite well, so it isn't the worst one. Sometimes these are a bit, uh, bit of a nightmare to get off. But just persevere, you'll be all right. Get a little tapper in there. Don't go mad with it, just want to get it moving. There we go, that's all we need to do. That's the exposure half shaft, just take that out. You might get a little bit of gearbox oil out of here, so it's probably best off to put something on the, gro on the floor. Stop you from dribbling it everywhere. So we've got two um, Phillips locking screws here. They'll need to be removed to allow the locking ring to spin. That's why I love Toyota, man. It's just simplicity, man. It's good. Get these out. Now keep everything together on the, again on the, uh, on the work surface here so you know how it goes back in. Right now, I haven't got the correct tool to do this. I have, it's in the toolbox, but I'm gonna show you how you guys how to do it at home quite easily. You take two Phillips screwdrivers like so. Swap them in the two, some of the two bigger holes like that. Just get in there. There you go, nice and easy. Who needs special tools, eh? Turn it. That should turn out there on its own now. Nice one. Pop that on the bench in its sequence. Get these tools over it. Right now, the hub should come loose now. Oh, it's a bit tight. It's been on there a while. There goes the bearing. Leave that in there for now. Cool. Right, check this guys, right? In the time it's taken me to get that hub off, this, this drum is almost totally dried. I mean, there's some 
there's some thick spots here that haven't, but check that out, man. It just makes this work so much easier. This stuff's awesome. Right, so we've brought the hub over to a nice sturdy workbench. Uh, first things first, we're going to take the, um, the seal out of the back and then we're going to be knocking the races out with a metal drift and the old, the old trusty carpenter's hammer. Now make sure you've got a, a bit of wood or something, a softer s surface, because you don't want to be knurling over the threads on the end of the hub here because we're going to be smashing the races out. There we go. Take the inner bearing out. Right, now we can get our drift. We go through and knock the inner race out, the outer race, sorry. Go, go side to side so you don't make the, uh, the race go on a, an angle. There we go. It's popped out already. Nice and easy. Flip it over, go side to side again, there we go, right at the edge there, right, I'll just put it in the vise here, just to finish it off. Nice little bit. Oh, bloody hell, look at that. There you go. That's all ready to be cleaned, washed. Bit of rust converter, bit of paint. All look good, man. Come with it. Right, so if you haven't got a parts washer, just get a big plastic tub like this, put the hub in it. Get some uh, heavy duty degreaser. Put in there this stuff, man. Put it on, let it let it get into there a bit. Just rub it in there, get some sort of brush, some sort of coarse brush. Give it a good scrub. Now I wanna get all, the, you don't have to take all the grease out, but I like to take all the grease out, get it back to, back to original, and pack as much grease in there as possible that we need. Greaser in there. You can never have enough of this stuff. I'm sure you're supposed to have some sort of protection on your hands, but see all the grease coming out there. It's awesome once it's done. Get a coat of paint on it. This thing's going to look awesome when it's done. You don't have to do this, but it's just one of those things, man. I love doing it, so when it goes back on, it looks smick as. Right, so we've cleaned the hubs up. We've got all the grease out of them, and we're going to put, be putting the new races into the hubs. Now, you can't get this wrong because they're two different sizes. So just drop them down in place. Right, now for you guys at home, if you use a socket, which goes down on the top of the race there, you can beat the life out of them and they will go in. But we've got a press here. It's only a cheap press. You can get them at most outlets. And it's just easier. It's less stress on the race itself. And uh, we're just gonna press them in nice and easy. And using the press also ensures that the, the, the bearing race goes down nice and square. And then when it's in its seat, You'll feel the resistance just come up a bit. There we go. That's it. It's in place. And then what we'll do, repeat that the other way around. Make sure, just to have a little look, make sure that the race is back in its seat. Yep, it's all good. 
and then repeat it the other way around. Right, so we're going to be packing the bearings, right? Now, don't just grab the grease and think that you're packing the bearings by running around like that. It's not how to get grease into bearings, right? There are a couple of different ways of doing it. I've seen some guys put it in a zip bag and pack them in like that, but I'll do it the old-fashioned way. So if you grab the, grab the bearing itself, and all you're trying to do is slowly go around the bearing and pack it in. And what you want to be doing, what you want to see when you come in, you want to see the grease come out of the come out of the bearing then. I'll try and get it to do that. See that? So it's squeezing down through the bearing itself. You know it's getting down in there. Give it a few spins as you're doing it, obviously, just to get it working around there. But that's what you want to see there. Look, it's a perfect example of it. Squeezing out the top of the bearing. Roller bearing, so yeah. Just keep going. And just be patient with it. Don't don't rush. There's no rush. This is the main the main idea of what we're doing is to change the bearings and regrease them to the best of our ability. So there's no rush at all. Just be patient. Pack it in there. Right, so we're going to be re removing the uh, driver's side brake assembly. Um, first thing to do is disconnect the handbrake cable. Um, and then the retaining springs. Now, you can buy a tool that does this real easy, but we're going to be using a pair of long nose pliers just to make life easier. Keep it all to one side. Nice and easy. Oh, drop one, drop two. Right, now a little top tip. If you're careful now, and take away the retaining pins. Get them up there as well. You can remove the whole brake assembly. All in one. And this way, we can ensure it goes, but it's nice and easy, laid out on the bench. We can dismantle it piece by piece. So as you're taking stuff off, just put it beside the shoes as it came off. It makes it nice and easy. Flip it over. You've got a little self-adjuster spring here. Pop that off. Back over. Now we've got that little C-clip the self adjuster. Just move that. Pop that off. There we go. And then let your adjuster off to reduce the tension in the the main spring across the top there. And with a little bit of brute force and ignorance. Keep that above there. Spring will come off nice and easy. Now there's the little horseshoe clips here. Just need to spread that apart. And then your trusty long nose pliers come in just to separate it. Off it comes nice and easy. There we go. Put your old shoes aside. Bring the new ones into play. So you can't get them wrong. One's got the pin for the handbrake and the other one doesn't have it. So nice and easy. Now just get a rag, and clean off the bits of the brake dust all over them. Just so it goes back nice. You can go on a wire wheel if you really want to make it pretty, but this is sufficient. And then the self-adjuster as well. Give it a little clean up. And the springs, believe it or not, they're quite shiny under all that brake dust. 
But one thing I do take to the wire wheel is the adjuster, just to make it nice and pretty. Plus, it's good to remove the thread, clean the thread up, grease it up, and put it back in. So we'll go over to the wire wheel. Take the end off of there. There's like a dust reducer washer. Make sure you keep that separate. Undo the threads all the way. And you see there's a little groove in there. That's to retain the grease for later on. So actually this one's not too bad, but we're just going to clean it up on a wire wheel anyway. Right, so first of all, handbrake lever. So in the pack there should be a, a new horseshoe clip. Pop that over there. Might need a little help. Just get it over there. That's it. And just use the long nose pliers and crimp them together. There we go. It's not going anywhere. Right, so we'll put our adjuster in there. Oh no, sorry, what am I talking about? Got a spring first. Once we've done that, then we get our adjuster in. There we go, nice and easy. Ready to go. A little self-adjuster there. It goes on there. Make sure that the uh, the adjuster hole is in the hole there. And then we'll repeat the process which we had before, just to turn it over. A little retaining spring. Ready for our little C clip. Just use your long oh no, I dropped it. Use your long nose pliers just to pop it over. There we go. Now then we got the bottom spring. Put that on there. It's probably gonna come off when you put it on, but it's there and we know where it is, right? So it's as easy as that, we're ready to go back on. Lovely jubbly. Start at the bottom, pull it over. There we go. There we go, nice and easy, could never be easier. Pop that spring around the bottom there. Ready to go. Get our retaining clips, sort them out, retaining pins. Make sure you get these right. This is gonna hold, we don't want what happened before to happen again. Take our long nose pliers, the trusty long nose pliers. Hey, who needs a special tool? And there. Last little clip. And then it. go. There we go. Brakes are ready to go. I'll just pop that over there. Self adjust to make sure that's in there. Oh, there you go. Oh, wait there. One last little thing. Nearly forgot it. And your handbrake cable. Right there. Nice one. Now use that old bit of rag 
clean off the old grease from the stub axle. Now last but not least, remember these are terrain tamer kits, so you get all the seals. There's a little packet with two of these little seals. Now this is the stub axle seal. Just pop that out, they come out easy as pie. And you don't need any uh, anything else but your fingers just to push the new ones in. And that's it, ready to get the hub on. Where is he? All, right, all painted up. All nice, ready to go. It just makes a difference at the end of the job. There we go, pop that in. So just pop the retaining washer in there. Just gonna put the retaining, threaded retaining ring in now. Now what I do, I go backwards until I feel the thread just click. Just so you're not fumbling around looking for it. There we go. So just like we took it off, we use the same technique to do the ring back up. Pop the two screwdrivers in there. And it's a good idea to take note before you put the, uh, the ring on where the locking screw holes are. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go a bit further than we need to and then back off slightly, about 30 degrees. And I like to do that a couple of times just to make sure that the, the wheel bearing sat nice. Yeah. Make sure you got movement on the. Uh, so we don't want too much friction there. Yeah. Let's go up again. Well, I'm happy about there. So we need to find where the locking pin holes are now. Around about, can't even see them actually. Right, so. There they are, there. There we go. So, take your locking pins, pop them in their holes, it's always 180 degrees out so you know which the other one is. <clears throat> Damn, I'm nice and tight. Now you can use a weight gauge on these uh, bearings to set them. It's actually just a fishing weight. Um, and if you refer to your, your workshop manual, that'll give you all the specifications for where it needs to be. So we've got the seal that comes in the terrain tamer bearing kit. Just pop that over there. Make sure you get it right way around. Gingerly get it on there. There we go, all ready for the half shaft. Just make sure on the half shaft flange that you don't have any old gasket material, which we have. So we're gonna go over to the wire wheel, give that a little clean up. So once we've cleaned up the uh, ceiling surface, the half shaft's ready to go in. Now just be careful not to put too much pressure on the half shaft seal. And make sure you line up the little locking pins. Now you might need to play around with this a bit to get it to go. Alright, so we've got our cone washers that are going to go in there. Pop them all in. And then the locking washers. And last but not least, the nuts to finish it off. And these are lock nuts, they're just crimped over at the end, just to lock in. So 
So of course we're going to be using the correct torque settings to be doing these up. Right, last but not least, we get the drum back on over the hub. And then all we've got to do after that is adjust up the handbrake and make sure that's nice and firmly back there. And then we take our screwdriver, get it in the back, and then just adjust the ratchet until you feel a little bit of tension. Could take a while. There's quite a lot of adjustment on there. And um, what I do while I'm doing it is just give the handbrake a little jolt and that will just centralise the shoes in the drum and it gives you more adjustment. Lovely. All done. Good to go. Get the wheels on and we're done. Okay, all done. I reckon about two hours each side. We did spend a bit more time on it because we were painting and cleaning and doing all that stuff. But anyway, I hope this video has been informative and I hope you enjoyed it. Remember, subscribe to the YouTube channel and there'll be more videos coming.